very dear brothers and sisters, the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is the way we express it on Good Friday, the passion. The word passion in English usually means something that is done with great emotion or with a deep commitment of the heart and soul. For example, some people have a passion for football and sports, or someone may have a passion for reading, or I remember an elevator in a hospital where it said, our passion is to give you the best care possible. Our passion, sometimes you hear it said in advertising, is to put people first or to make you look good, to sell your home. Our passion is to give you the best lawn possible. And so on and so forth. What about God's passion? What is God's passion? It's in our gospel this morning. God's passion is for Jesus Christ to go into Jerusalem and to suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and to be killed or to be put to death, and then on the third day be raised. This is God's passion. This is the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. This passion of our Lord, therefore, is to undo the sin of Adam and Eve, to redeem you and me and the whole world, to buy us back by divine grace, gained from Jesus' suffering from the clutches of the devil, and to give you and me an unspeakably wonderful inheritance with the Divine Son in a wonderful eternal life with the Father in heaven. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. What greater love, what greater passion could there be? God's passion is therefore one of supreme excellence and of immense love, one that reestablishes that eternal order of justice that was sorrowfully completely lost by the sin of the first parents, that order that was shattered by sin, seemingly irreparable. God's passion is to give us what we could not give ourselves. To earn for us the unearnable, the unreachable, the immensely beyond our goal, ability to have eternal life. We could not save ourselves. And so God's passion was to come and give us this gift, to restore it to us. And yet, look at St. Peter. God forbid, God forbid, heaven forbid that you should suffer, Lord. He didn't understand that this was the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. So often you and I too, our world today, we seem to run away from passion, this type of passion, to avoid pain, 
discomfort and suffering. Almost anything we do, we will do to avoid sharing in the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. God forbid, St. Peter said to Jesus, we know to tempt him. God forbid that you should suffer. And we say this to ourselves so often, God forbid that we should go through this, go through this suffering. We see it in Jeremiah the prophet. He got to a point where he couldn't stand it anymore. You do me, O oh God, you do me, and I let myself be doomed, tricked into this suffering that I cannot stand. And yet, let us not be duped by the devil because everything we suffer, every inconvenience, every sacrifice can be offered to further Jesus' saving passion. Let us not be afraid to be united with this passion this divine passion in the cross, the divine suffering, and so help save the world to redeem our brothers and sisters by this wonderful human divine union with the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Blessed Mother Mary had a passion. Her passion of all things, completely uninhibited by sin, was to unite herself completely to the will of the Father and the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. She overwhelmingly united her heart and soul with the most profound sufferings at the foot of the cross. She is, therefore, mother of the church and she helps us when we feel so much resistance to the temptations, to the sufferings, to the inconveniences, or simply the confusions that cause us distress. She intercedes for us that our hearts might open themselves, open themselves more deeply to embracing the same passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a passion of total, complete excellence that leads us and so many others to salvation and, uh, and, and to the salvation of the whole world. May the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, all his sufferings, be a part of our lives as well to the point that divine grace gives us the ability, like man, to embrace that passion. Amen.